Welcome back to my remodel series and thanks for all the support and positive feedback you guys had for parts one to three. After a brief pause, we are continuing part four with even more accelerated acceleration, compressing work that took over a month and a half to get through into this one video, so buckle up. To recap, there were five phases for the contract work on this project. My part one and two videos covered the electrical and drywall work, and part three showed painting. Today you'll witness the completion of the contracted work with the HVAC installation and garage floor polishing, and a lot of DIY work that we did. Demo work to remove trim and flooring, carpet removal, installing new baseboards and floors, and painting, which was handled by myself with much help from family and friends. Excellent! So back at the end of part three, my garage and two bedrooms were painted, but the work was not yet finished. And while our living room converted to a bedroom slash multi-purpose living space was functional, it was far from ideal. So our top priority after returning from our trip was getting the master bedroom back in working order, which began with a trip to Lowe's. Stopping by Lowe's this morning because Joe's a little short on cock. I mean, we need cock. I mean, I love cock. I mean, check out all this cock. Have we made enough, have we made enough cock, 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 cock jokes? You're the cock master, so. Can you handle that much cock? You got any advice yeah. about this cock? This isn't getting old, <laughs> is it? We do need liquid nails as well, which is harder to make uh, suggestive jokes about. Hey, check out this liquid nails over here. Doesn't it look like a penis? No? Okay. This is how Paul likes to handle wood because dad jokes are never go out of fashion here. It's medium density fiber, fiberboard, Joe. I guess uh, this is a party to stop and help pop. After the Lowe's trip, the next step was carpet removal because the carpet in both rooms was really dirty and quite old. Thankfully, I had help from both my editor, Joe, and my dad to get all that rolled up and carried out to the backyard, and then began the subfloor preparation, scraping up a bunch of the old glue and tack strips that had held the carpeting down. Probably the most useful tool for this job was called the mutt, which belongs to my dad. It's just a big scraping tool, but it scraped those spike strips up with no problem. From there, we moved on to installing baseboards, which meant making plenty of use of the miter saw setup that I made just outside our sliding back door. My miter saw is definitely one of my favorite tools because it can do precision cuts and it lets you get cool shots like this one. See, look at that miter. It's an excellent miter. So yeah, father and son. Even after a full day's work, I spent a few more hours in the evening to get the baseboards painted so we could install the floor the next day. And I was helped out by my daughter, Hannah. See, I didn't get any on my hands. That's good too. I told you I was great. <laughs> sure, excellent painter. Ooh. Welcome to day, I guess this is day two of the uh, phase four and a half, something like that. We're trying to get uh, the bedroom and the computer room back up to speed so that we can move some stuff out of the rest of the house and into these rooms. So yesterday, Joe and I, along with my dad, pulled up all the carpets and the underlayment and the spike strips that were in here. And we also installed uh, the baseboards and the trim around the doors. And last night, I painted those baseboards so that today we can install the flooring. Did the baseboards before the flooring so that we can paint the baseboards without the flooring being there. Apparently you can go either way. Sometimes they do the flooring and then the baseboards, but we spaced them off enough from the floor so we can slip the flooring under there. Joe's back today, and uh, the first thing we gotta do is get this area cleaned up, clean the floor as much as possible so that we don't have any, any pieces of bits and gravel and stuff underneath the flooring when we install it. Here's a quick look at the finished work from yesterday. They're not pretty nice. They're not pretty nice, I think, given that we're not professionals or anything like that. First, Joe did most of the work. With a hammer, Dale. With a hammer. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday's back too. And bonus, we were able to pull up the carpeting in the computer room as well. There apparently was some sort of tile 
in this room at some point. Did not do the baseboards in here yet, so that's kind of a stretch goal for today. We may or may not get to that. I don't have enough flooring to do this room yet, so that's why we're kind of putting this one as a second priority. But the one mistake we made yesterday, apart from my dad knocking a piece of wood over into the freshly finished walls, but I patched that, was we to I totally just didn't do the trim or anything around the sliding door. And I actually didn't account at least for the headboard up here, so that's another stretch goal is maybe we'll do the trim there too. But we'll see, we'll see how things go. This is luxury vinyl plank flooring that's just tongue, tongue and groove sticks together. It's the same stuff we've used throughout the house elsewhere. Of course, the most difficult part is uh, these transitions. And since we're working with existing flooring, we can't exactly start pulling that stuff up to tie it in. So uh, we're gonna shamefully use a transition strip here and we're gonna shamefully just glue it down in place. Fortunately, the transition strip is wide enough. It should be able to overlap both of those. And we can start here with just a fresh full piece of uh, plank. Cool. The next day we worked on floor installation in the master bedroom and I'm using the same luxury vinyl plank flooring that we used in the rest of the house back when we did the remodel in early 2020. We have been very happy with this flooring, however the extra cases of flooring that have been sitting out for a couple of years didn't seem to quite tongue and groove together the way they did originally. So I don't know if it was due to the age of the flooring or some other reason, but we were having a little bit of a tough time at first, but we did manage to get the job done. Except the very last row by the sliding door because at the end of the day we had one more job to do. We had to head over to the office. We're almost done, but we're gonna press pause on this project because much as we'd like to finish off this last strip, uh, we are running out of time. We have one other important job to do today and how, what, what great timing. It's like 100 degrees outside today and the air conditioner has just like stopped working. It stopped putting out cold air. So it's getting really hot in here. So I'm gonna wait to finish this off till later this evening. We're gonna do a special run over to a brand new location. It's part of the Paul's Harbor family. We'll, we'll show you in a minute. Back at the office, lots to be done in here to move out and back home still, but hopefully the home improvement projects will be done first. But Joe is gonna be the beneficiary of this L-shaped sit-stand desk, as well as we're gonna upgrade him at home to this PC that we built him over here, which was his office PC, no more office, so he can bring this home. It's like a 5950X in there and a uh, RTX 3090, so it's pretty cool. Actually, 3090 Ti. <laughs> All right, fast forward, uh, we packed up the desk, we brought it here, we got the computer. Look at Joe, no apartment, Joe, awesome. Here's the tour, look, here's the apartment. Rooms are upstairs, awesome, bye. <laughs> All right, desk is unloaded, it is in pieces, but uh, Joe wanted me to show me where the magic happens. Is that? You know, <laughs> dedicated office. Hey, this is all like his trim and paint and floors and stuff. This is way better than <laughs> room we were working on. Bedroom over there too? Yeah. Looking good? Joe, thank you for your help today. Thank you. And uh, I'm gonna go finish what we didn't finish. <laughs> okay. The next day, I finished off the floor installation in the master bedroom with the last row over by the sliding door. The last row is always the trickiest to install with this type of flooring, and in retrospect, yes, I should have waited and installed the baseboards after the floor went in, but I kind of ended up doing that anyway. For the sliding door area, I had an idea to do a bit of extra trim to cover up that last bit of flooring. So I added some pieces of blocking underneath the sliding door frame, and I made a baseboard extension by trimming these really long baseboards lengthwise Wise to make them a little bit shorter. So I'd ended up making kind of a layered effect there and I tried to trim and bevel the edges so it would look nice and you know, I think it looks just fine. It's probably not the most professional carpentry job that's ever been done, but I think it turned out all right. Finishing that meant we were able to reclaim our bedroom at last though. So that evening we built a new bed. We got a new bed that was made by this company called Duma. It's a pretty good bed. We put it all together. Hooray, we finally have a bedroom to sleep in once again and we no longer have to sleep out in the living room. The next week the split AC unit was supposed to be installed, but one of the pieces arrived damaged. So we switched our attention over to the computer room, starting with prepping the subfloor, which once again needed a fair amount of scraping before it was ready. I was once again assisted by my dad and my editor, Joe, and this was a pretty good day. We had a bit of experience under our belts from working on the master bedroom. So it involved a lot of work with the miter saw and the jigsaw to do the floor installation, and of course the baseboards as well. For the baseboards, we had a new present that arrived. 
A nail gun, who would have thought? I already have an air compressor, so all it took was a very inexpensive nail gun, and we were able to install the baseboards much more quickly and much more satisfyingly as well, and we were able to move on to caulking once again. Joe has requested that I not make a bunch of suggestive caulk jokes in this video. I don't know why he's so anti-caulk. Joe's very particular about his caulk. You need to have the right tip, it's a wall you, you should especially not mistreat the tip of the cock is okay. the point that Joe's trying to make. Joe's also using old cock here. Okay. You might be more interested in new cock if you're if you're looking into some cock. Um, but sometimes the old stuff, you know, it's okay. Don't don't write it off just because it's old cock. You should just name this video mess with cock. <laughs> Two guys in cock. Check out check out our cock. But instead, let's look here. He's fixing my miters. Some of my miters were quite on and precise. A few of them required a little bit of fixing up, as Joe is demonstrating here. And then the final step was to glue down some transition strips between the bedrooms and the hall to indicate to anyone who might walk by that, no, this job was not professionally done. A bit more work was done that week to finish painting the trim, but once again, I had a trip. I went to LTX, if you guys remember, and that also happened to coincide with the rescheduling of the HVAC installation. So on Monday, July 31st, the HVAC was installed and I wasn't there. Joe was once again kind enough to come by and supervise the work while I was traveling and he did a little video narrating what was about to be done. So while well, Paul's up in Canada having fun at uh, Linus Tech convention, he left me behind saying he doesn't need me and all that shit and whatever, but he wanted me to look over his house. Apparently I'm useful to him in that sense. But then Joe didn't get any footage of the actual installation itself. But trust me, it was installed, it is fully functional, it's actually awesome. And of all the upgrades that have been installed with this project, the AC it has to be number one. It's at least in the top five. But anyway, we would have liked to have finished phase five right away after the HVAC installation was complete, but scheduling did not line up and we had about a two week gap before the concrete team could come out. That meant reclaiming the garage was on hold since the floor wasn't done, but the bedrooms were a different story. They had the new floors and paint and trim, but still needed some finishing touches, such as painting a few unpainted portions of said trim, baseboards and door frames and such, which is a painstaking and detailed process that I think we did an okay job at. I also used the other side of the long trim pieces that I cut for the shorter part by the sliding door to cover the edge of the flooring in front of the closet. I think that turned out all right too. But with the trim work finished, the computer room reclamation could begin, starting with my wife's sit stand, desk frame, and top, as well as my sit stand, desk frame, and top. We decided to change up the layout in the computer room a little bit, which we have been very happy with so far, but moving all that furniture in meant getting all that furniture out of our living room space. So that area could gradually return to normal as well. It is still cluttered with toys and unfolded laundry to this day, but at least the couch is back to its intended configuration, which Hana is quite happy about. I've also added the LG Ultra Gear 45 inch ultra wide 240 hertz OLED monitor to my main desk setup with an arm mount of course, so I'm better set up to game there now. We also ordered some cordless faux wood blinds from Home Depot, which arrived after a week or so. I installed those in the computer room, which wasn't too challenging, and finally, back out in the garage, some light, this elegant Hampton Bay fixture, which I installed without electrocuting myself even once, although I'm pretty sure I came close. And that brings us to the final phase, at least once I remove the washer and dryer from the garage just a moment and give the place a quick once over with the shop vac. But yes, the final phase, the garage floor and the final crew, the guys from Los Angeles Concrete Polishing, absolutely one of my favorite teams to work with, so much so that I helped build a gaming PC for one of them, Eric, and that video is already up on my channel if you wanna check it out. Eric is good friends with Jake, who is also a PC gamer, and Jake was very knowledgeable about the equipment and methods that they used. All right guys, I'm here with Jake. Jake works for- Los Angeles Concrete Polishing. Los Angeles Concrete Polishing, and he gave me a really cool rundown of exactly what they're doing in here and the hardware that they're using. So the first step, day one, is basically sanding the entire floor, which has already been completed. What was that big, that big like Zamboni thing that you guys were using to polish uh, It's the a floor? Husqvarna T6 grinder, walk okay. behind grinder, basically on the bottom nine segments. Each segment, microscopic diamonds, runs about anywhere from 400 to 2000 RPM. Okay. And we're running at about 900, so it just grinds the whole floor. 
Grinds the floor. It was connected to a dust collection, uh, dust collector mm -hmm. as well. Three filter. So that sucked it all in. Mm -hmm. Three filters is yep. great for the amount of dust that's produced with sanding concrete. Runs 220 volt, so takes up a bit of power, but it's, uh... And that's gonna be my question. They, uh, <laughs> they, they wanted immediate access to the sub panel out there because they needed yeah. a 220 volt connection Run instead of a 10. So that worked out. And that uh, handles most of the main area a lot more quickly than it would be otherwise. And then the corners were all taken care of. Uh, Small yeah. Metabo grinders. Okay. Seven inch and a five inch. Smaller tools. And uh, this is stage part. So for day one, we got the grinding and then you guys are gonna do a layer of epoxy? Epoxy, premium epoxy, UPC. I believe it's 5,500. Okay. Um, right there we have, it doesn't really matter what color, but these are just, ones that have color in it. Okay. But we broadcast sand, we use 20 grit sand. Basically, you wanna smooth it out, roll it, kinda like paint it down. Okay. And the reason why we grind it is so that the epoxy has something to grip to. Once we throw the sand in it and it hardens, the sand's gonna be on the surface. Tomorrow we sweep up all the sand. Okay. And that 20 grit sand is rough enough so that the material will pour it has something to harden, fall okay. into the floor. Cool. So it's not gonna pop off or anything like that. And then what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow is uh, the big uh, hippo mixers, and we mix three bags at a time. We pour it all out okay. at about th three eighths to half an inch, and then we let that cure overnight, and then we'll come back that final day, use the same machine, that grinder, it's also a polisher. Oh, okay. Bring it all the way to 100 grit or, or four or eight, depending on your sheen level. Okay. Naturally diamond polish and seal it and good to go. So this is actually gr actual grinding. This one's been used, obviously. Yeah, these are uh, pretty used ones. This one's a different shape also. They come in different shapes. There's always variations. We use that to differentiate besides color. So this is XX2. So this is for extra, extra hard concrete. Things that, you know, if we get floors that just don't want to cut, these are what we use. Okay. We define concrete by the PSI. So typically medium's 25 to 3,000 PSI. Okay. A harder concrete, which the XX2s are for, about five to six thousand uh, psi. Okay. And how do you? How can you tell? Do you just start grinding and then you, you yeah, kind of figure it out? Kind of uh, process of elimination, right there. Okay. So grind a little bit, see if it's working. If it's not, go with something that's made for the. Usually, the you density. can tell the amount of dust the floor is creating uh, if you put water on it and how uh, how uh, what color it changes. And then these are actually for polishing. Okay. So that's four hundred dry. So you can also wet, oh, you can, yeah. these machines have a tank in them. Okay. They shoot water in the front while you spin. Oh, so so you some diamonds use... require it to be wet. Okay. So these have diamonds in them, but you obviously can't see them. And all they do is they hone the floor, get the scratches out from the metal cut. Okay. These are resins, these are more ceramics. Okay. So same thing, different grits, 50 grit, 400 grit. It's kind of like sanding wood. Yeah. That's the best example I tell people. Okay. So the finer the grit, the more the polish and the flatter and smoother it is. All right, well, it's already looking way better and, and it's just been sanded so far, so. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thanks, Jake. It's gonna look good. I'll make sure of it. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. And there it is. The garage floor is finished. After three days for the installation, after waiting uh, more than 24 hours for the final urethane coat to dry completely, we now have a finished Nice, clean, and quite smooth floor. I've sanded down to 100 grit. I clearly still have a lot of work to do in here, but this is the end of the like contracted phase of work. So the contracting work is now finished and I am left with essentially as blank a canvas as this garage is going to be for me to now reinstall things, figure out storage, figure out where I'm gonna shoot stuff. Figure out, of course, ways to knock down the echo, which is pretty significant in here right now. And uh, yeah, storage. Storage is gonna be a major, major uh, thing to figure out really soon. But given that it's been about three months since I decided the office is cool, but I, I really wanna move back home and start working here again, and to hopefully solve those problems of the garage getting too hot, the garage uh, being too loud, or sometimes having too much external noise that bleeds in, and the garage just running out of space. But hopefully I've solved at least two, if not all three of those problems by having the AC unit installed now, and by having just a really much nicer, more uniform finish on this whole area, so that I can make videos again from the comfort of my home, and also hopefully make stuff look pretty cool back here, and have it also functional with lots of storage for PC parts and stuff that I'm building. 
And so, after three days to install and a day plus for the final urethane coat to dry, my garage floor is 100 grit smooth and ready to be trod upon once again. And with that, the contract work is complete. And to keep with the theme of renewing functionality to all these spaces that were unusable while work was being done, I have reconnected the washer and dryer after cleaning out the exhaust duct first, of course. I even took down the easy up now that the bedrooms are finished and this stage of the project is complete. But the next stage was just beginning because what about the crucial step of actually moving out of my office and my garage workspace? Would that ever be usable for making videos again? It seems unlikely. There's lots more work still to be done and I am committed to at least one more video in this series to bring about some closure. But if you guys would like me to keep it going longer than that, by all means, let me know in the comment section section down below. And of course, liking this video and sharing it with people also helps a lot. I would like to close by saying huge, prolific, and vital thanks to those who assisted me with this project, my editor Joe, as well as my mom and my dad, my wife and my daughter Hannah. Thank you to my contractor Michael, and of course the teams who handled the HVAC and concrete finishing who did an amazing job. Before you guys go, don't forget to check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.